Hey Transport Nerds, just wanted to let you know that I'm planning to launch the Talking Planning podcast shortly, which is a great throwback to some of the more talkback style videos that I've been wanting to look at doing for a long time. So I highly recommend getting ready to listen in in your popular podcast locations where you'll see more soon at the Talking Planning podcast. Episodes will also be posted via video on YouTube, so make sure you don't miss this one and let's get into today's review. Double the decks, double the fun. For the first time in over a year, we're finally checking out another double decker bus. This time, I'm at Manly on an overcast Sunday morning back in February, and much to my surprise, here comes a Forest Coach Lines MAN ND323F. Those of you familiar with Sydney's buses will know that these are the same type of vehicle used on the B line operated by Keolis Downer Northern Beaches formerly State Transit, sands the yellow livery. Let's start off with the experience from the bottom deck. Like most double-deckers, there are certainly height constraints with the roof. I don't think my head quite touched the ceiling from memory, but it really wasn't far off. Fortunately, the glass area downstairs is quite decent and the lighting means it doesn't feel too dark. Looking around a little more, it becomes clearer who manufactured this body and that is, of course, Gemmelang, who also built many of the transit systems Scania K310UBs, Mercedes 0500 LEs, and perhaps most importantly, the new BYD electric buses. The double-deck MANs with the same Gemmelang body are also popular over in Singapore, and I caught a few of them back in 2019. I quite like the Gemmelang body design, and I think it looks even better with an extra deck on top. Sure, the interior is pretty no frills with large window frames, bucket seats and small bus stopping lights, but it's still fairly comfortable. Up the back however, the mind your head sticker is a necessary one as it is a little bit tighter. But realistically, if you're traveling on a double decker, you actually want to be on the top deck. So let's head up there. The view from the front is excellent and the first couple of rows enjoy a lovely large window thanks to a much more generous glass area on the top deck. Above the front window you'll find CCTV cameras and another next stop light where I believe a screen would be fitted on the Beeline buses. As we head along Sydney Road through Fairlight you can see the narrow concrete roads which are typical of Sydney's older suburbs. The lack of dedicated turn lanes and left lane parking make them really difficult to navigate for smooth journeys. At least sitting on the top deck it was nice and empty. And as we head further down Sydney Road, let's have a listen now. Spec-wise, the ND323F is fitted with a 10.5 litre six-cylinder which puts out 320 horsepower and up to 1700 Nm of torque pushed through a six-speed ZF Eco Life. And as you could probably tell before, it is pretty decent, even for a bus this big. And from the top deck, you can still hear that engine pretty well, 
whilst taking in the views of the awning tops, second storey windows and business identification signage. You also get to play the fun game of will this tree branch smash into our windows? Fortunately, as we pass by the hop, skip and jump shuttle, the answer is no, as all of the glass is indeed intact. through Balgoa, still firmly within Tony Onion's Abbots, former seat of Warringah, you can see the galleries, studios and cafes as we head along. And of course, you can see the simple yet practical stop bells that Gemelain chose to fit to these buses. Heading along, there are a couple of small rattles, which is a bit of a shame for a December 2018 build bus, but I've definitely been on newer buses with worse. Hopping back downstairs, I decided to grab a spot in the flip-up seating area near the stairs. The monitor that lets you see how many people are sitting upstairs is a nice touch, especially on busy peak hour services. The flip-up seating is also pretty generous, with four seat spacing allowing for larger scooters and wheelchairs to fit in. not always a given on double-deckers. Something quite rare on modern low floors is the ability to sit facing the rear of the bus. I've always liked backwards facing seats since I was a kid and they can be pretty handy for group travel. Even better here is that Gemelang decided rearward facing passengers also deserve a stop bell light. Changing seats once again, it's time to get ready to jump off the bus so I've aligned myself perfectly for pole position to make a quick exit. Thanks for joining me and I will see you again soon.